friends myself dr chaitanya vatri and we are going to study today the topic of msc code biotechnology from paper 15 animal biotechnology and bioethics that is stem cell technology embryonic stem cells and their application here are the contents starting with stem cell technology what is it what are stem cells then history classification types and origin embryonic stem cell how to grow embryonic stem cells test for identification of embryonic stem cells adult stem cells induced pluripotent cells stem cells on the basis of the source organism need of stem cells ethical issues application future and refuses now coming to what are stem cells stem cells are those unspecialized cells which are able to differentiate into any cell of an organism and they have ability of self renewal so what is the stem cell technology it is a developing field that combines the effort of cell biologists geneticists and clinicians and offer hope of effective treatment for variety of malignant and non malignant diseases here are the brief history of stem cell research in 1959 first animal created by in vitro was fertilization in 1968 few years then discovery of hematopoietic stem cells was done in 1978 just after 10 years stem cell first discovered in human umbilical cord in 1981 first in vitro stem cell line developed from mice proceedingly in 2001 focus shift from embryonic stem cells to adult stem cells in 2005 researchers in uk developed cord blood derived embryonic like stem cells and few years back stem cells have been used to treat over 80 diseases that are being regulated or evaluated for new treatment options then how can we classify stem cells these can be classified on the basis of their dividing ability so first is pluripotent cells totipotent cells and then multipotent cells Multipotent cells can be divided into neural cells, cardiac muscles, and blood vessels. As their source is brain, they can develop brain, heart, and bone marrow. On the other hand, pluripotent cells are those cells which later form cell embryo, then blastocyst, and these are responsible for generation of neural cells cardiac muscles and blood cells what are stem cells and its types embryonic stem cells are or we can say pluripotent stem cells are those which can form almost any type of human cells in the human body some stem cells are tissue specific like adult or multipotent cells they can form only limited types of cells that are blood cells brain cells and liver cells now third kind is very important and that is induced pluripotent cells these can be generated by reprogramming differentiated cells engineering by the scientists to act like embryonic stem cells means they don't have previously the ability but due to some modifications then to then they behave like embryonic stem cells perinatal cells these stem cells have also ability to change into specialized cells these are the type of stem cells according to their origin embryonic stem cells now we focus on embryonic stem cells as the name suggests embryonic stem cells are derived from embryo most embryonic stem cells are derived from embryo that are specially developed from eggs that have been fertilized in vitro or in a in vitro fertilization 
method so here fertilization occurs zygote develop blastocyst process occurs fetus and here is a whole body development or a whole adult development from fertilized embryonic cells how these cells can be grown in in vitro so growing in laboratory is also called as human embryonic stem cells that we can grow these are generated by transferring cells from pre implantation stage embryo into plastic laboratory culture dish as the diagram is indicating cleavage stage embryo when occurs the cultured blastocyst is taken and the inner mass of cell is removed these cells are then cultured into petriplate and establishment of embryonic stem cell cultures occur the cells here divide and spread all over the surface of the dish the coating of the layer is a called a feeder layer the mouse cells in the bottom of the culture dish provide cells a sticky surface for which to which they can attach also the feeder cells gives ample of nutrition to the culture medium on which these cells can grow this is a protocol of how the culture cells or embryonic stem cells are developed in a laboratory first we have to remove or dissect out the uterine horse horns and then briefly rinse the material with centrifugal endothenol placed into the parenchymal with pbs separated each embryo from placenta and embryonic sac dissect and wash in pbs place all embryo in a clean clean petri dish and finally chop with a sterile blade when it come when until it becomes palpable add it trypsin and dna incubated for 15 minutes at 37 degree pipette out and pipette up and down for 5 minutes after incubation these are then inactivated by trypsin centrifuged at 300 rpm for 5 minutes supernatant is removed resuspended the cell pellet freeze the cells for implant and these cells are further taken for culture in the fresh medium and the growth grown cells were called as embryonic stem cells but there are differentiation pathway of adult stem cells they can develop into hematopoietic stem cells mesen kinemic stem cells neural stem cells skin stem cells and epithelial stem cells here we can see they can be differentiated into many stem cells what are the test that we can apply to identify the embryonic stem cells line are perfect for growing or sort culturing here we can use you we can use a specific techniques like presence of transcription factors such as nanic she and oct4 these are the proteins particular cell markers or surface markers had been applied to identify the embryonic culture cells test for tetroma teratoma which can be done easily in the lab microscopic examination as we know is a common method to identify the embryonic stem cells next is adult stem cells adult stem cells have been identified in many organs and tissues including brain peripheral blood blood vessels skeletal muscles skin teeth heart gut liver ovarian epithelium and testes
first used to identify address distances. These can be identified easily with the help of molecular markers labeled with them to identify the generation of the specialized cells. Testing and repopulation of tissue in another organism or animal is also done to identify the stem cells. Now, induced pluripotent stem cells. Induced pluripotent stem cells are the stud adult cells that have been genetically reprogrammed to be an embryonic stem cell. Like state of being forced to express the genes and factors for maintaining the defined properties of embryonic stem cell. Here we can see treatment through IPSC. How um, induced pluripotent specialized cells can be used for the treatment. So we can see somatic cells typically which are fibroblast are isolated, reprogramming factors are added, colonies were selected with the help of molecular markers and these are expanded and, put, and established into a stable cell lines. Stem cells on the basis of source organism can be of three types, autologous, allogenic and xenogenic. Autologous are those cells which reside in the bone marrow. A small number of it is present in the bloodstream. Multi, these multipotent peripheral blood stem cells or PBSCs can be just like bone marrow stem cell to treat and they can also be used to treat leukemia and cancer and various other blood disorders. Basically, these are, these are the cells which are taken from the patient itself for the treatment. Allogenic stem cells. The source of these stem cells are from another donor. And primarily, it would be a relative or completely unrelated donor. The stem cells in this situation are extracted from either a donor's body or cord blood. Now next is xenogenic stem cells. In this, the stem cells are taken from the different species and are transplanted. For example, xenotransplants, which we have seen in Parkin synthesis. There is no major ethical concern and large amount of tissue is available in this type of stem cells. However, lifelong immunosuppression and risk of rejection are the major limitations of xenogenic stem cells. Now, what are the basic properties of stem cells? Self renewal, ability to go through numerous cell cycles, division and maintaining the undifferentiated state is the major property of the stem cells. Its potency means the capacity to differentiate into many types of specialized cells is one of the major factors by that's why we use stem cell. The use of stem cell. Increasing understanding how diseases occurs, generate healthy cells to replace diseases at compounder regenerative medicine and testing of new drugs for safety and effectiveness. These are the key factors why we use stem cells. Ethical issues related to it. Harvesting of embryonic stem cell destroys the blastocyst. And to some it would be a killing of an organism. So ethical issues like here. Embryonic stem cells Research require human cells. To some, this should be not. To some people, this is unethical. And third is by taking tissues from human or host or similarly genetic or immunological, not separate people, this would become a commercial market for human cells. So. That's why it comes under unethical.
application of stem cell technology. Replaceable tissues or organisms. As we know, these cells have ability to regenerate into many specialized cells. So we can use them to generate or regenerate new type of cell or organ. Repair of defective cells, delivery of genetic therapies, so many genetic diseases can be repaired by this process and delivery of chemotherapy agents. As we all know chemotherapy leads to majority of cell destruction so we can use them as a delivery option. Now here you can see cancer cells, conventional therapy, tumors are replaced, cancer cell with stem cell therapy, tumor regression take place. Treatments. Here are the some treatments that we can see how to practically or theoretically imply stem cells. The potential use of stem cells may be can be taken in stroke, traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, deafness, myocardial infection, muscular dystrophy diabetes, multiple cancers, rheumatoid arthritis, spinal cord injury, these all can be treated with the help of stem cells. Therapies which we employ are adult stem cell transplant in which bone marrow stem cells are taken peripheral blood stem cells are taken, umbilical blood cord stem cell transplant, especially in India, company like Life Cell is nowadays providing an option to store your umbilical cord stem cells for a longer period. So this technology has come to India and we can use it for future purpose. How the therapeutic cloning would work? Cloning of tissue, human tissue has never been done. But the only way to perform is we can take the skin cell from patient's body containing nucleus and potential genetic code or we can take embryo, unfertilized human egg nucleus, uh, egg where nucleus is removed. We can fertilize a skin cell nucleus with the egg cell a skin cell DNA inserted into the enucleated egg, egg divides, blastocyst appear and blastocyst stage appears and these are then taken for conservation to culture into the in vitro medium. Here we can grow embryonic stem cells and these stem cells are can be used for further purposes. Here are the references which I have taken in context for present in this slide. Thank you.